So once you've done that, you'll want to start the coding process. And there are different ways to code. So if you have a coding structure, a, a preliminary coding structure, you'll want to have it open and go to this box here to the right and click the plus button and add all your, your codes, okay? Control over community resources, click submit and women's control over household resources, submit. And you'll do this for all your codes. Now you'll notice that I wanted to have uh, the categories yes and no under those two codes. And so I'd create what we call a child node. This is a parent node. It's just like a header one, for instance, if you're in Microsoft Word or a main heading. And then under it, like a subheading or subcategory, you want yes, submit, and you want no, submit. And same here, we want yes, and we want no. Okay? So I have it here. So these are the parent codes and child codes, and you could even have grandchild codes um, under those. All right, so that's one way to code. Another way is to go here to codes, and your codes will be on the left here, and you can add new codes um, right here by clicking the plus button. Women's voice in the community. Submit. So that's another way. Okay, once you've done that, go back to your transcript and now read the transcript as you code. First question is who controls the resources in the community? And the respondent says the development chairman. Okay, these are the responses. Now, when you code, you want to highlight the, the response that you want to code. And this is where it requires some judgment. This, when you highlight it and code it, these are called excerpts, whatever you've highlighted. And it, it requires judgment to decide how lengthy or, or short you'd like your excerpt to be. And that's just determined by the question that you're, you're trying to answer. So the excerpts are just the chunks of data that convey a meaningful idea. And you want to keep these comprehensive enough to capture the idea well, but you also don't want to include information that is unnecessary. This is because after coding, you'll be able to click on the code and see all the excerpts um, within that code. So you want to be able to quickly scan through the, the, the list of excerpts and identify connections very easily without being bogged down by irrelevant information. So you want to exercise some care um, as, you, as you highlight your excerpts and code them. So the, to this uh, question, the respondent says, the question is too big. Uh, the moderator explains what resources are and then the respondent responds that, oh, the development chairman. Okay, so the development chairman keeps the things? Yes. Keeps the resources for the community? Yes. So you wouldn't want to highlight all this to, to code it because you have some information here that's just the moderator trying to um, elaborate or to show his engagement in the conversation. Um, but really the response is the development chairman. Now we don't know whether the chairman is a woman or a man. And they've said uh, women's, and our code says women's control over community resources, yes or no. And we are not sure. So you might decide, oh, you know, I, rather than having this be a yes or no, I want to actually have a code that says who controls community resources. So you want to create a new code 
and you want to delete this original one oh sorry don't delete the lo the wrong one you want this one to go away okay and you also then need to delete the yes and no categories that were child nodes under that and you do this so that you don't have uh, nodes, codes that are in your structure that you won't actually be using. It will just really uh, create confusion. Okay, so we want to say who controls community resources, it's the development chairman. We want to highlight that, just the response and not the whole thing. Now, the three ways to code in the deduce are one, after highlighting the, 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 the excerpt, you press the space bar on your keyboard and then you select the one that you'd like to code. It's this one and you press enter and it's coded. Another way to do it, and I've just uncoded it, is to press the space bar, but then rather than um, pressing enter, you can double click this and it's coded. A third way, I'll just close this and close this. A third way to do it is once you've highlighted it to double click it here and you've coded. So those are three ways to do it. My favorite one is to simply highlight it, press the space bar um, and then uh, click it once and press enter to code okay so the next one so what about in the family who can keep the resources for the family we get family head to keep it so who can be the family head sometimes it's my mother my father or oldest sister okay what's it like between you and your wife who can keep the resources my wife okay your wife controls the resources yes all right, so again, you see there's a lot of information here, but the information that you're really looking for is do women control um, household resources? And so you could simply say, um, you know, you could highlight all of this if, you, if for some reason the context is relevant for you and you'd like to be able to say, you know, it's the family head and which in, includes the wife. Or you can simply um, highlight yes and code it under yes. If the only reason you're coding it is to have the quantitative data that says X percent said yes and X percent said no. So again, it really just depends on what you're trying to do. And so you'd keep uh, on doing this uh, throughout for the entire transcript. Um, just reading, highlighting the relevant uh, information that conveys a meaningful idea and assigning a label or a code to it. Okay. And um, I, just a few things to, to emphasize. If you're coding a key informant interview, you want to code uh, one unique item once. For instance, if, uh, if this person said that um, the, the wife controls resources to this question and then somewhere later on again mentions the same point that the wife controls the resources, you wouldn't necessarily want to code that second time again to say that yes, because then the vote here would be counted twice. But then if it's a focus group discussion, um, you want to code what the response as many times as it appears because one of the reasons we conduct focus group discussions is to increase the sample size at a low cost and so if you have multiple respondents and one says yes the wife controls it the respondent two says yes respondent three says yes respondent four says no you'd want to code each of the yeses separately and then the no so that you can have essentially three votes for yes and one for no. So that's just something uh, to keep in mind. Another tip is well, uh, that um, an excerpt can have more than one code attached to it. 
So what I like to do, for instance, for every uh, project is to have a code on great quotes. Okay, and these are quotes that I hope to include in the report. And so I might, for instance, code what we just coded as yes, uh, you know, it's uh, under the yes code, but I also might want to include it as great quotes. Though in this case, it's not a great quote, it's just yes, but uh, you get my point is that you can have multiple uh, codes for one excerpt. All right, and then one last thing I'd like to show you is how you merge uh, codes. So as you code, you might realize that, you know what, um, these two ideas are the same, uh, are kind of related, and I don't want to have them as separate codes, women's control over household resources and over community resources. I just want it to be all one code. And so you can merge them. It just gives you the ability to do that by saying merge. And you can decide what your primary code is going to be. Uh, you want it maybe to be control over household resources to be the primary code. And you want the community resources one to be merged into it. And so you submit. And see, now you don't have women's control over community resources as a separate um, parent code. It's been merged. Uh, so that's that's also another thing you could do. So there are very many, many interesting things you could do within deduce. Um, so you go ahead and look for any text you might have and just play around with it, code it, try out the different types of coding and see what works best for you. And, and I wish you all the best in conducting qualitative analysis. Thank you very much.